Now the rate law, what, what does that tell us? It tells us the relationship between the reaction rate and the concentration of the reactants. Um, but oftentimes that's really not very useful. Oftentimes we'd rather know the relationship between the concentration of a reactant and time. So for instance, if I have a reaction um, and I wanna know how long it takes for the reactant to uh, change uh, from one concentration to another, um, what equations or relationships or expressions can we use uh, to figure that out? And the answer is called the integrated rate law. So this <clears throat> tells us, or these, because there's multiple integrated rate laws depending on the order of the reaction, tells us the relationship between the concentration of a reactant and time. So. Like I said just now, each reaction order has its own unique integrated rate law equation. I use the term IRL. I know that usually means like in real life, but <laughs> I'm just using IRL to mean integrated rate law. So each reaction order has its own unique integrated rate law equation. We have zero order, first order, and second order. And the integrated rate law is derived from the rate law, which, which is, uh, you know, you remember rate equals K times the concentration of A to the something power. The, the uh, integrated rate law is derived from the rate law using calculus. And it's really not my intention here to teach uh, calculus. First of all, um, I haven't taken calculus in about a decade, so I'm a little rusty. On, and also, I'm, I'm a chemistry teacher. I'm not a math teacher. But unfortunately, sometimes uh, mathematics is inescapable uh, when you're studying chemistry. And that's especially true if you're a chemistry major and you go on to take physical chemistry. Just you wait. <laughs> it's crazy. So uh, for the purposes of uh, simplicity, we're going to go ahead uh, just like we did in the previous lesson, and we're going to limit our discussion to a reaction in which we have a single reactant that we're going to call A decomposing into products. And the reason why is because, uh, like I said, for simplicity, when you have more than one reactant, the mathematics becomes um, significantly more complex. Generally, most people would consider, whoops, Excuse me, sorry about that <laughs> notification on my phone. I'm gonna to try to turn that down. So like I, like I was saying, when you start adding uh, more, than, more than one reactant, the, uh, the concentration, or excuse me, the, um, the mathematics becomes increasingly uh, more difficult, significantly more difficult. So we're gonna do a single reactant system. So keep that in mind going forward. Okay, so if we're talking about zero order reactions, we're gonna talk about each reaction order, zero, first, and second order individually. Um, and we're gonna talk, we're gonna look at the integrated rate law equations for each of them. So <clears throat> the rate law for a zero order reaction, uh, if you recall, is rate equals the rate constant times the concentration of the reactant to the zero power. And of course, anything to the zero power uh, is simply one. And so this equation simplifies down to uh, the rate is equal to just the rate constant. Um, it's the simplest. Uh, that means that the reaction rate is independent of concentration. Now the integrated rate law looks something like this. <clears throat> so again, this equation is derived uh, by integrating, uh, which is a calculus term, using an integral. Uh, this is, uh, like I said, it's, <laughs> sorry, dogs are growling. It's kind of throwing me off my train of thought here. <laughs> so. It's derived by integration. And um, like I said, it's not my intention to teach integration in this lesson. And as much as I hate uh, jumping straight to an equation without deriving it, usually I like to derive equations. Uh, but in order to derive this equation, um, it requires, I don't know why my phone keeps making noises like that. Excuse me. I'm gonna make sure I turn this down once and for all. There we go. <laughs> All right. I apologize for the distractions. Anyway, so yeah, I, I really don't like just jumping to an equation uh, without deriving it. But in order to derive these, you need to know calculus. And, you know, general chemistry students, um, they're kind of all over the place when it comes to their knowledge of calculus. When I was taking general chemistry, I did not know calculus. Like, I, I had not really taken calculus um, at that time. And so I would have been lost uh, deriving the equation. But so... Okay, so for zero order integrated rate law, the equation looks like this, where we have the concentration of A at time T 
is equal to minus kt, that's the rate constant times time, plus the concentration of A initially, the initial concentration of A, okay? So we're gonna, uh, what, what I wanna do um, in this one is I wanna take this equation and I wanna sort of look at it a little more closely to see if we can sort of understand this a little bit better. So I'm gonna go to uh, the whiteboard. And so here I am in the whiteboard. <laughs> and I'm just gonna, whoops. Uh, it's been a while since I've used this. So I'm just gonna resize this a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna try to. Still getting the hang of it, folks. Come on, man. I don't know what's going on. Ah, okay, that's how, I, that's weird, it's from the bottom. Anyway, so again, this is the zero order integrated rate law equation, right? Concentration of A at time T is equal to minus KT plus the initial concentration. Now, this equation actually looks a lot like the equation or the formula for a straight line. So the formula for a straight line, remember that's Y is equal to mx plus b, right? Now x, of course, is the uh, is sort of like the input. Uh, y or f of x is like the output. And then m, that is the slope of the line. And then b, that is the y-intercept. which is the point on the y-axis uh, that intersects with the line, right? So the reason why I wanna bring that up is because using a straight line plot to understand uh, the dependence of concentration on time, or you know how concentration of a reactant and time are related, uh, can be very, very useful to, uh, to predict concentrations. So if you wanted to run this reaction and you wanted to make a linear plot, um, the linear plot would look something like this. And I'm gonna go back to PowerPoint uh, for a second here. Okay. So the straight line plot for a zero order reaction would look something like this. So notice that on the y-axis, we have the concentration of A at time t. On the x-axis, we simply have time, and the y-intercept is the initial concentration, and the slope of this line is minus k, right? It's minus k. Why? Because, well, the concentration of a reactant decreases uh, over time, so we would expect that to, to be the case. Okay, let's take a look at the integrated rate law for a first-order reaction. So for the first order reaction, remember the rate law equation is rate equals K times the concentration of A to the first power or simply the concentration of A, right? Now the integrated rate law, and again, I really dislike jumping straight to the equation without deriving it, but unfortunately the calculus is pretty advanced and uh, really over the head of a lot of general chemistry students. So the integrated rate law, the uh, equation that results upon integrating the rate law <laughs> looks like this, where we have the natural logarithm of the concentration of A at time T is equal to minus KT plus the natural log of the initial reactant concentration. So if you don't know what the natural log is uh, or what a logarithm is, I'll try to explain it. It's kind of hard to explain, but a logarithm is basically like uh, a, a power that you have to raise a fixed base number to uh, to achieve whatever you're taking the, the logarithm of, right? So every logarithm has a base to it. Um, one of the most common logarithms is the natural logarithm that has a base of uh, E. E is like a, a mathematical constant. It's also called Euler's number. Um, you can you can look this up. Um, I'm sure if you look it up or you, <laughs> I, it'll probably, uh, there's probably a lot better explanations out there uh, than what I can do now. So this is it. Natural log of concentration A at time T is equal to a minus KT plus the natural log of the initial concentration. Now, uh, one thing I wanna do is I wanna sort of uh, rearrange this uh, equation a little bit. 
I want to rearrange this equation to show you another uh, commonly used form of this equation. Again, this is the integrated rate law equation associated with first order reactions. And another form of this equation that you're going to see, um, usually you're going to see it, looks like this, where we have the natural log of the concentration of A at time T hmm, divided by the concentration of A initially. This is supposed to be a T here. Let me uh, erase that and do a little bit better job. <laughs> uh, where's the blue one? Okay. So the natural log of the uh, quotient of the concentration of A at time T divided by the initial concentration is equal to minus K T. So all that I've really done here to get from this equation up here to this equation right here is I've subtracted both sides of the equation by uh, natural log of um, initial concentration. And if you understand the properties uh, of logarithms, let's say I have something like uh, natural log of A minus natural log of B. Well, because of the properties of logarithms, this is equivalent to the natural log of A over B. It's not very intuitive, but it is mathematically true if you understand the properties of logarithms. By the way, um, if you want to leave any feedback, let me know uh, how you're doing, whether this lesson is good, whether this lesson sucks. Let me know. I can handle uh, honesty. That's what I want is honesty. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that you guys understand that this equation up here and this equation over here are saying the exact same thing. They're just simply uh, rearranged, and uh, it's not completely intuitive because it's we're dealing with logarithms, um, and the properties of logarithms are kind of weird, but um, that's what it is. Okay, so we can go ahead and move on. Now, just like, if you'll notice, just like the... Uh, zero order integrated rate law equation. Uh, this uh, equation here um, can also be sort of thought of as a as a y equals mx plus b uh, straight line equation, right? Which is which is very very useful for a chemist, right? So if we look at let's say I'm going to go back to uh, PowerPoint here. If you'll just bear with me, I think I'm getting better at this. I'm still not good, but I think I'm getting better. <laughs> All right, so first order integrated rate law, if we were to uh, sketch a straight line plot of, um, for a first order reaction, it would look something like this, where we have uh, T on the x-axis, just as we did for the zero order straight line plot, but look at the y-axis. On the y-axis, we don't have concentration, we have the natural log of the concentration, right? And the y-intercept up here is not the initial concentration, it's the natural logarithm of the initial concentration. And in this case, the slope of the straight line uh, would be minus k, negative of the rate constant. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So we talked about zero order, we talked about first order. Now let us switch gears once more and talk about second order. So recall that the rate law equation for a second order reaction is rate is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of the reactant squared, right? And if you were to, uh, if you knew your calculus like I don't, or at least like I kind of do, but not really, uh, if you know your calculus and you were to integrate this, uh, you would arrive at this equation here where we have one over the initial, or excuse me, not the initial, one over the concentration of the reactant at time t is equal to kt, not minus kt, just kt, plus one over the initial concentration. So this is what it looks like for a second order reaction. Excuse me. And just as we saw in the case of zero and first order reactions, um, this equation sort of looks like the same form uh, as the y equals mx plus b uh, straight line. And so what would be the, what do you think would be uh, the 
the unit on the y-axis or the, the value on the y-axis. Uh, if we were to write a straight line or if we were to draw a straight line plot uh, using the second order integrated rate law. Think about that. If I was going to have uh, time on the x-axis and I wanted to make a straight line with this equation, what would be on the y-axis? Well, if you guessed the inverse or one over the concentration of the reactant, you would be correct. So this is what it looks like. So notice that for the for the uh, for the zero in the first order reactions, the line was sloped downward. It was a negative slope, right? Uh, but in the second order, it's actually going upward. Why? Because we're not talking about the concentration or the natural log of the con concentration. We're talking about the inverse or one over the concentration. So of course it's going to be flipped, right? And so again, on the x-axis, we have time. On the y-axis, we have one over the concentration of the reactant. The y-intercept, in this case, the point at which the line intersects with the y-axis, is going to be 1 over the initial concentration, and the slope of this line is going to be k, just k. So we talked about the all three of the integrated rate law equations. So if we look at a summary of them, um, I'll just go through them uh, once, once more. Um, and by the way, if you want these PowerPoint slides, um, let me know. That might be something that I can do. I might be able to, to put them like on a Google Drive folder or something like that, or, or send them to you. Um, if you're interested, just reach out to me and, and we can make that happen. So summary of integrated rate laws for zero order, we have uh, concentration of A at time T equals minus KT plus the initial concentration. First order reactions, we have natural logarithm of the concentration of A at time T is equal to minus KT plus the natural logarithm of the initial concentration. And finally, for second order, we have one over the concentration of the reactant at time T equals KT plus one over the initial reactant concentration. So if you know these equations, now this, <clears throat> this might seem a lot, like, like a lot. So if you don't know your calculus um, well enough to derive these equations, um, then you, are, you, you have to memorize them. And there's really no getting around that. You either have to teach yourself calculus. Now, there's a lot of good resources online for free if you want to learn calculus. Um, but if you don't want to teach yourself the calculus to derive these equations, then you have to memorize them. And in, in, you know, as, as far as my recommendation goes to, to memorize them, I would just suggest uh, using flashcards where you have like, you know, zero order integrated rate law written on one side of the card, and then you have the equation written on the other side. And then you try to, you know, you try to remember what they are and you kind of get closer and closer and closer to it until you know them by heart. Um, so that's what I would recommend doing if you're going to be tested on this kind of stuff. Hey, hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to watch the full video from which this clip was taken, click the box over there on the left. And if you'd like to watch my entire chemical kinetics playlist, click the box on the right. Thank you very much for watching and take care.